Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust. Hi there, folks, and thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're going to have an exciting show. Our guest will be Dr. Daryl Trample from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, and we're going to discuss some things on securing an egg supply, and we're going to talk about some of the things that he does here for the poultry industry in the state of Iowa and here at Iowa State's Diagnostic Lab. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right back after the break. must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living obviously, but it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and, and the reason we do it, it's been safe and effective, and we're gonna to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Well, Dr. Trample, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. And folks, this is Dr. Daryl Trample from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Iowa State University, where he serves as the poultry extension veterinarian and poultry diagnostician here at the Diagnostic Laboratory, which uh, carries a pretty big responsibility in the state of Iowa. Uh, yes, uh, the state of Iowa is now the number one egg production state in this country. We have between 55 and 60 million laying hens in production in this state. That's more than the next two states combined. So huh. uh, we have a huge egg industry in this state. Our turkey industry is uh, significant, about eighth in size in the United States. And uh, we have some broilers in this state. Uh, most people don't think about this, but we also have a significant game bird industry. And we have uh, game birds in particular uh, Bob White quail and chucker partridge, and most of these are raised and used in herding preserves. I'll be dang. Well, it is a big industry, and, and it comes with big responsibility. We've had some great discussions. Uh, it's nice for me to come home being an alumni of, of the College of Veterinary Medicine here at Iowa State and, and really dig into some of the programs that are, that are really doing some good things, and, and yours is obviously one of those. And, and so what are some of the things that you do here at, at Iowa State? Uh, as a poultry uh, extension veterinarian, I take telephone calls and uh, emails and uh, answer questions for people who own birds, all the way from the folks who have just a few backyard birds to the large commercial operations that may have uh, two million chickens on an egg production site. So oh, oh. there is a great, great range in the uh, size of the operations that I deal with. Uh, very often we have questions pertaining to animal welfare. Uh, in recent years, uh, backyard poultry or urban poultry have become more popular. Those questions are increasing in frequency. And uh, so, so there's a wide range of questions, everything from uh, animal welfare to disease problems that the owners might be encountering and, uh, and everything in between. Wow. And then on, uh, I assume that you, on the pathology side of things, uh, you're taking cases that are being submitted to the diagnostic lab and working to, to solve those issues with practitioners and, and uh, producers alike. That's exactly right. We have uh, birds submitted to the diagnostic lab intact. Uh, sometimes uh, tissues are submitted, only the tissues, and those we usually do bacterial cultures or histopathology, which is microscopic examination on. And uh, so once the birds come in, uh, we do a necropsy, and that's the equivalent of an autopsy in a human. Right. And uh, so I, as a pathologist, I look at the lesions, which are abnormal tissue changes. And based on the lesions and the history of the case, 
Some tissues will go to the bacteriology section of the lab. Some will go to the virology section. Uh, some tissues might go for microscopic section development. And uh, once in a while we have serology done too. So the pathologist uh, has to kind of know a lot of diseases and know which tests are needed to confirm or, or deny a diagnosis. Big job. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, more with Dr. Dr. Trample here at Iowa State's College of Veterinary Medicine. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Dr. John Kellenberger joined Ashland Veterinary Center in 1996 and became a partner in 2003. AVC cares for large and small animals and serves a four-state area. Dr. Kellenberger received his BS in Animal Science and Industry and DVM degrees from Kansas State University. He and his wife Angie are proud parents of three children and enjoy the company of nine dogs, five cats, and five horses. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and I'm here with Dr. Daryl Trample, who is a poultry extension veterinarian and poultry diagnostician here at Iowa State University. And we've taken Doc Talk on the road to glean some outside expertise and we really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Dr. Trample uh, has a program that he has developed and works with called the Secure Egg Supply and I think it's something that just would be fascinating that we would start to share some of the details and why don't you start out and give us the 30,000 foot view of what that is. Sure. Uh, back in 2003 in Asia, highly pathogenic avian influenza was diagnosed. Uh, initially in, in South, Car South Korea, but very rapidly it spread throughout Asia. And that avian influenza pretty much stayed in Asia uh, until about uh, 2005 when the virus got into migrating birds in Qinghai Lake uh, in China. Huh. And thereafter then the virus spread to Africa and Europe and there was a great concern this virus might come to the United States. And so because of that concern, uh, the National Highly Pathogenic Avian Influenza Response Plan was developed. And uh, this was an excellent plan, uh, but there was a problem as far as the egg industry was concerned in that there would be 96 hours after the initial detection of a disease uh, before the uh, federal government had the opportunity to determine determine where the virus was and, and how far it had spread. If an egg operation with a million and a half chickens happened to be inside of a control area 
and a control area is within a diameter or a radius, I should say, of 6.2 miles from the initial outbreak, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to move their eggs for 96 hours. Unfortunately, the commercial egg operators can only store whole shell eggs or liquid eggs for 48 hours. Oh my. After 48 hours, all those eggs would have to be destroyed. And depending upon the price of the eggs at that time and the number of birds in a premise, people could lose up to a quarter million dollars a day if they couldn't move those eggs. So consequently, we worked with many others. It was uh, not just Iowa State, but University of Minnesota, uh, USDA, FDA, the private industry, and many others to develop a plan where the egg premises could show that they do not have that virus and would be able to move their eggs in 48 hours. And uh, this plan has been uh, very well accepted in Iowa. Virtually 100 percent of the commercial egg industry in this state participate. One of the large primary breeders participates as well as a mail order hatchery and uh, kind of a specialty business that produces specific pathogen-free eggs. So we've had uh, great participation in this, and uh, the industry likes this idea of uh, being able to get those eggs moving as soon as possible. Well, I think it's something that gives us a place to take a break, and when we come back, I think the thing that's incredible to me is the forward planning. You know, before we were trying to get to that detection of the foreign animal diseases, and now we're really putting those checks and balances in place that allow us to have a safe and secure food supply. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us. More with Dr. Trample right after the break. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high risk cattle or treating BRD. Hey folks, welcome to today's On the Farm Tip. And today we're gonna to talk about how to identify sick cattle through the DART method depression, anorexia, respiratory, and temperature. A depressed calf is one that has its head down, it singled itself out from the group, it's got a dry nose, dull eyes, and its ears are down, and it's not paying attention to its surroundings. Anorexia means the animal's off feed. These animals will have a hollow gut, have that hollow look over their flank, and they're off feed. Sick animals don't eat, and animals that don't eat get sick. Respiratory rate. If we have acidosis or respiratory disease, these animals will increase their respiratory rates and they will breathe irregularly. And lastly, is the animal exhibiting a high rectal temperature? Normal rectal temp for a feedlot calf is 1015 to 1035 Fahrenheit. If these things add up, DART, depression, anorexia, respiratory, and temperature, then you have an animal that's probably not doing right. We need to get it in, check it out, and give it a treatment. That's today's On the Farm Tip. BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service 
for the future of animal production. You know just how costly BRD can be, but did you know that bacteria like Manheimia and Pasteurella can cause BRD? That's why veterinarians and cattle raisers focus on preventing pasteurlosis with a quality vaccine like Pulmogard PHM-1. It's ready to use, highly syringable, and provides comprehensive protection with a single dose. For pasteurlosis protection that's truly the head of the class, ask your veterinarian about Pulmogard PHM-1. TrueTest Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we are on the road at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and Dr. Daryl Trample is our guest, and we're talking about secure egg supply and when we left we we're talking about the the unique part of the program about keeping eggs viable in the face of an outbreak and keeping production moving forward and food security and and so let's let's continue on about that and get down to some of the specifics sure uh, to uh, move eggs uh, everyone has to be assured that those eggs are free of any virus and the flock that originates those eggs or, or lays those eggs does not have virus and so uh, we have uh, developed a uh, preparedness option for people who uh, want to prepare before an outbreak. And uh, this option uh, requires uh, training. Uh, we go out to the individual premises and we train people there to take samples so that in the event of an outbreak, they don't have to wait for the federal or state government employees to come along and get the samples. Uh, the samples are taken from the roof of the mouth and uh, placed in uh, brain heart infusion broth in a little tube. Uh, those samples are collected in the morning. By noon, we plan on having those samples arrive at the diagnostic lab. During the afternoon, there's a test called a PCR test that can be done in about three hours. And that test is mechanized, and you can run a lot of samples in a, in a short period of time. So by the end of the day that the samples are collected, results are known, and the results are forwarded to the incident command. The incident command is the organizational structure of the federal government uh, that uh, control these outbreaks when a foreign okay. animal disease occurs. So uh, the testing gets done from every house, every day, uh, results are known at the end of each day. Uh, if the tests come back negative, if the chickens in that house are acting normally, they're eating normally, they're drinking normally and producing normal numbers of eggs, uh, and the mortality in the house remains within normal levels, then those eggs are able to go to market. And uh, they are put into a truck, and the truck is sealed, and nobody opens that seal till they arrive at their destination. And I think it's important that people understand this is in the face of an outbreak. We're That's trying to right. find the, the herds or the houses that are unaffected so that we can still have eggs. That's exactly right. One other key part of this uh, uh, preparedness planning is that Iowa has a memorandum of understanding with several adjacent states that Iowa egg producers do business with. We have a memorandum of, um, of understanding with Minnesota, our state to the north, uh, Nebraska, our state to the west, uh, Michigan, and Colorado. So for example, in the case of an outbreak, if an Iowa producer need to move eggs from a, an egg operation in Iowa to Colorado, the state animal health authority in all of those states are uh, already aware of the plan and they've agreed to participate and those eggs will be able to move interstate without uh, hmm. very much uh, hold up. Uh, we think Wisconsin will soon join the plan as well. Very important to, to move in those. We're going to have to take a break but when we come back we'll kind of wrap up and, and uh, talk a little bit more but really appreciate what you're doing. Okay. Thank you for watching Doc Talk and we'll be back in a minute. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. 
Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Berenger Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. You know just how costly BRD can be, but did you know that bacteria like Mannheimia and Pasteurella can cause BRD? That's why veterinarians and cattle raisers focus on preventing pasteurlosis with a quality vaccine like Pulmogard PHM-1. It's ready to use, highly syringable, and provides comprehensive protection with a single dose. For pasteurlosis protection that's truly the head of the class, ask your veterinarian about Pulmogard PHM-1. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Welcome back to Doc Talk. It's Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Daryl Trample, and we are at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We've been talking about a secure egg supply, and, and you know we have a lot of contemporary issues around our food animal production systems. And, whether it's food safety or sustainability, and the one that we've talked about during the break was animal welfare. And I think there's a lot of questions about welfare, especially when you're talking about egg production. And, and uh, you know, what are some of the things or highlights that you see here as we close the show? Uh, for the egg industry, I think uh, animal welfare is right at the top and one of the issues that they're concerned about. And uh, the welfare concerns revolve primarily about uh, around the uh, amount of space available to chickens mm -hmm. uh, in cages. And uh, a lot of progress has been done uh, and made over the years. The United Egg Producers now recommends twice the uh, amount of space per hen that they used to. And interestingly enough, uh, about a year or two ago, the United Egg Producers and the Humane Society of the United States reached an agreement, uh, a compromise on the animal welfare issue. And as part of this compromise, the agreement was that chickens would stay in cages, but it would be a very different kind of cage. These, are, these would be cages that maybe have uh, 50 or 60 chickens in them instead of maybe six or eight. Uh, they would be much larger. The cages would have uh, nests that the birds can go in and lay their eggs. Uh, they will have perches, they'll have uh, uh, places where they can scratch and so forth and do many of the normal activities that a chicken would do if it was uh, outside of the cage. Uh, the issue uh, has not been resolved yet in that the desire is for the federal government to make this an official approved law. 
Uh, the reason this is so important to the egg industry is that over the last few years, many different states have started to enact their own laws right. and rules and regulations. So an egg producer in Iowa, for example, may or may not be able to uh, meet the requirements of other states. Uh, one of the most important states is California, and they have passed a law called Proposition 2. And uh, under this proposition, uh, birds have to have lots of space. And uh, the problem is that uh, California now requires all eggs entering the state to have the same space requirements. And so we then have uh, an impairment of trade across straits. And uh, that's a big issue for a state like Iowa, where the vast majority of the eggs in this state are exported to uh, other places in the country. So sure. uh, big free issue. movement of eggs across state lines is critical, and uh, some kind of an agreement is needed to make that happen. <laughs> well, thanks for being on the show today. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting to me on how we're preparing to keep secure food supply, whether it's a welfare issue or a disease issue. And really appreciate the efforts that you're making to help us do that. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> glad to be here today. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. And if you want to know more about the show, you can go to us at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. This is Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Triangle Vaccines. Triangle, protection you can trust.